The Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont. Another chapter in the Cavalcade of America in music presented by DuPont featuring Don Voorhees and his distinguished orchestra. Music of the movies is the title of this evening's story and what progress the movies have made. Better writing and music, superior direction and acting, and greater technical skill. All of which combine to give us the excellent entertainment provided by motion pictures today. Incidentally, one of the contributions of research chemistry to modern motion pictures is the improved film on which both picture and soundtrack are recorded. DuPont is an important source of the film used today. Thus, in entertainment, as in other fields, DuPont chemists are providing better things for better living through chemistry. to take a musical trip through the cavalcade of motion pictures from the days of the Nickelodeon up to the present day. Before we turn the calendar back, Don Boris and his orchestra are going to play for you a delightful song from a picture that is playing this very minute. Its title is Swing Time. Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers are the stars. And the song by Jerome Kern is The Way You Look Tonight. member of the Nickelodeon, the motion picture house of 25 years ago. It was not much bigger than a hallway. Admission cost five cents. The only sound was the noise of a silent film projector and the busy piano player who had to portray single-handed all of the thrills and heartthrobs in the perils of Pauline. Poor Pauline is being tied to the railroad track by the dastardly villain. Not far away, the train is rushing toward her. But galloping to her rescue on a milk-white steed comes the hero. Will he make it? He does. Pauline is saved and falls into her lover's arms. One moment, please, while we change reels. That was music of the movies in the days of the Nickelodeon. It 
wasn't long, as motion pictures steadily improved, before picture theaters began to use small orchestras to accompany the action instead of a lone piano. The year 1915 brought forth a production that made motion picture history and remains today a landmark in the progress of the silver screen. The Birth of the Nation. A musical score was composed specially for the picture and furnished to the orchestras in each theater. And one of the themes was brought out 14 years later to become the theme song for Amos and Andy. Do you recognize it? As pictures became more ambitious, the musical accompaniment became more important, portraying every mood of the picture. Let us turn the calendar quickly ahead to 1923 and the motion picture The Covered Wagon. Special music was composed to help depict the California gold rush in 1849, around Stephen Foster's great song of that period, O Susanna. later, it became the fashion for a movie to have a theme song. Many of these theme songs, played at the showings of the pictures, became big hits. Diane from Seventh Heaven, Ramona from the picture Ramona, Last Clown Laugh from the picture of the same title, Angela Mia from Street Angel, Janine from Lilac Time. The first big theme song hit was Charmaine from the Big Parade. Remember it? In 1928 came a revolutionary step in motion pictures. Warner Brothers brought out The Singing Fool, which was the first all-music, all-talking picture. It was here that Al Jolson introduced the first song hit to be sung for screen, the silver Brown and Henderson's Sonny Boy. the cavalcade of musical talkies. Soon after came Broadway Melody, starring Bessie Love and Charles King, and with music by Nacio Herb Brown. The same composer wrote the music for the Hollywood Review, and the big hit was Singing in the Rain. And the same year, Rudy Valley made his first musical picture, The Vagabond Lover. And the song hit was A Little Kiss Each Morning. The next year, in 1930, Metro Golden Mare produced The Rogue Song. This was important for it established the success of the operetta type of sound picture. Lawrence Tippett was the star 
and the audiences throughout the country thrill to his singing of the Rogue Song. In 1932, Maurice Chevalier charmed motion picture audiences with his delightful singing and acting in Love Me Tonight. Rogers and Hart wrote some grand songs for this picture. Don Boris and his orchestra are going to play one of them. Isn't it romantic? In 1933, 42nd Street was an outstanding success. This was the picture in which Dick Powell made such a hit, causing everyone to predict that he would become a big star. Remember, shuffle off to Buffalo... animated cartoon, always a form of moving picture with universal appeal, introduced a song that quickly made its way around the world. Anywhere in Paris you could hear... In Amsterdam, too... And 
and in Tokyo. All over America, too, everyone was singing and whistling, afraid of the big bad wolf. From Walt Disney's world-famous Silly Symphony about the Three Little Pigs. and Ginger Rogers dancing to that grand tune, The Continental. In the fall of 1934, Grace Moore appeared in a picture that made screen history, for it brought grand opera to motion picture audiences as a part of a charming story, and with sound recording that brought out all the beauty of the arias which Miss Moore sang. In addition to arias from Madame Butterfly and Carmen, Grace Moore sang a delightful waltz composed especially for her to sing in that picture, One Night of Love. Last year, there was Roberta, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers again, and this time music by Jerome Kern. One of his beautiful melodies in Roberta was, Lovely to Look At.
It is hard to believe that in the eight short years since sound and film came together that such phenomenal improvement could be made. It is a far cry from the old Nickelodeon music to such tunes as Cheek to Cheek from Irving Berlin's 1935 hit Top Hat. The motion picture productions of grand opera, operetta, musical comedies, and reviews are now making use of all the great composers of our time as well as those of the past. The latest smash hit picture is Swing Time with music by Jerome Kern, from which Don Boris and the orchestra will play one of the outstanding hits, Bojangles of Harlem. <laughs> chemistry this evening starts with a gold dredging operation deep in the jungle of New Guinea, that remote island in the South Seas. The operators needed a heavy electric cable more than one-eighth of a mile long, but this cable had to have a different kind of upper jacket. For the covering of natural rubber ordinarily used broke down quickly and completely under the direct rays of the tropical sun. So the American manufacturer who received this order turned to Dupreen, DuPont's chloroprene rubber for the protective covering on this special cable. Thus we see man-made rubber, a creation of chemical research, invading a country where natural rubber is produced to do a job that nature's product could not perform. Here's another example of the usefulness of Dupreen. Certain types of airplanes are built so that their fuel supply is carried in sections of the metal wing, and the seams must be caulked or sealed to prevent leakage of the all-important fuel. A resilient tape made of Dupreen is employed to seal these tank joints because, unlike ordinary rubber, it is stubbornly resistant to the ravages of gasoline or oil. You may never have occasion to see a New Guinea gold dredge or look inside the wing of an airliner, but you can be sure that Dupreen is serving you somewhere in some way. Perhaps it is in the ignition wires of your automobile, in your oil burner or washing machine. In dozens of places, Dupreen is rendering superior service because of its distinctive properties. Amazing to believe, this useful product of our modern chemical age is made by DuPont from limestone, coal, and salt. Even though the present cost of making it is quite high, 
Duprin offers assurance that if necessary, America can be independent of rubber supplies from foreign lands. More important now, Duprin gives industry a new material from which to fashion articles of greater usefulness. In creating this chloroprene rubber, DuPont chemists have again made good their pledge. Better things for better living through chemistry. This evening completes the summer series of the Cavalcade of America in Music. Next week at this same time... DuPont will resume its popular fall and winter series, reenacting authentic episodes from the brilliant pageant of American history. The first of this dramatic series will tell the interesting story of that master showman, P.T. Barnum. Don Voorhees and his orchestra will supply the musical background. Columbia Broadcasting System.